how are you? For those of you who are muted, you could just give me a head nod so I know that you're doing good. <laughs> I Listen, I have like 20 things that I want to share with you and I'm just so delighted to spend the next hour with you. So I'm thinking we'll just chat for a little bit. I'll share a few things that are on my heart and then closer to the end of the call, we'll pray. So as I'm talking, if there's anything that you want us to pray for specifically, feel free to go ahead and drop that in the chat. Drop your prayer request in the chat. So one thing that I really wanted to talk about today was what everyone else is talking about, and it's crisis. The Chinese word for crisis is composed of two characters. One Chinese character is danger, and the other is opportunity. So I was reflecting, you know, January 2020 started off right. I was in church, the family's looking to fly, I'm being intentional, my relationships are blossoming and I'm nurturing them. I have like 25 jobs and I'm like streamlining them so that I can experience harmony. But then three things happened. One was that I was released from one of the contracts that I had. The second thing that happened was I had a toxic friendship that I was just trying to hold on to so dearly. And that was snatched from me. God was like, no, shut down. You do not need this relationship. And the third thing is what we are mutually experiencing, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I don't know about y'all, but anyone else cured from the mommy guilt that y'all felt for not spending enough time with your kids? Because I'm all the way healed. So for me, I'm big on harmony. You know, I've learned the hard way and the long way to appreciate the ebbs and flow of life. And this is something that Sybil and I talk about all the time. Like, you know, just relinquish control, go with the ebbs, go with the flow. And that has been a constant reminder from Sybil to me. So in December 2019, my husband and I were in a place we're going to purchase a home. And the lender said to us, you are the perfect candidate. You guys have excellent credit. You have your full-time job and a W-2, so it's easy to process. Your income is great. Long story short, we did not close on our home. But I can't help but be thankful that that additional $1,000 that we'd have taken on for the mortgage, considering that my husband has not worked in the last month, I cannot help but be thankful that God was in the midst of all of that. In addition, the contract that I lost was supposed to be cushion. I wasn't planning to use it to pay for the home, but that was cushion. That contract is not there anymore. And then what I had to realize is my destiny is not tied to anyone or anything that left me. So that contract, it was not, it didn't continue because it was not supposed to be in my life. So now I am crystal clear that rejection is protection and it's God's redirection. Y'all, I'm encouraging you to make God your GPS, okay? So when that signal says GPS signal lost, recalculated, you trust God and you do exactly what he says. So, you know, I just got to the point where I had so many disruptions in my life and some of them were small, some of them hurt, some of them were big. And after a while, this was me to God, take it, take it, take it, just take it all. I was just like, you know, take it. Anything that does not belong in my life, just strip me from it. And I just had to realize that I need to relinquish control and just allow him to remove anything that does not belong because I was just tired of him like taking things. I'm like, take it, take it, take it, take it all. So in terms of what's going on, I never want us to become so insensitive that we look past the sufferings and the death of others, right? But if we can look past our personal inconvenience of this quarantine, can you find something to be grateful for? Can you do a flashback and realize that things are not happening to you? They're happening for you. Can you be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that you realize that what the enemy meant for evil, God can and will and has turned it around for your good? You know, if you read Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, excuse me, we know that there's a time for everything. There's a season for every activity under the heavens, right? So there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. That's not a contradiction. There's a time to plant and there's a time to uproot. This is not meant to confuse you. There's a time to tear down and a time to build. This, my friends, is harmony. In light of Ecclesiastics, I wanted to quickly touch on the internet debate of productivity. You know, I've seen some things where people are saying, if you don't come out of this quarantine with a book, a business, or a launch of some sort, then in essence, you wasted your time. I have a huge problem with this. If God did not tell you to write a book, build a brand or launch, then I believe in doing so, you are wasting your time. You know, for me, I support frontline essential workers. So I'm working from home.
but I'm also homeschooling. This is not downtime for me. This is double time. I am working twice as hard as I used to, right? So with that said, this is a window of opportunity. I'm not going to deny that. And if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he will tell you exactly what your role is. And he probably already has. For some people, I believe that it's a time to rest. It's a time to renew. It's a time to be still. And for others, I do believe that it's their time to move on to something that God has been telling them to do. What I don't want you to do is to mistake activity and busy work to produce a facade of productivity. Productivity is doing what God has told you to do. So I'm challenging every woman on this call to redefine productivity in this season so that it aligns with God's will. Last week, I remember feeling so overwhelmed because there were so many windows, op windows of opportunity. There were emails, webinar invitations, free masterclasses, messages on email, then there was WhatsApp, then there are check-ins, how are you doing? Same way I was doing five minutes ago, I'm okay. You know, then there's work, then there's homeschooling. And I realized for me on that specific day, those were all distractions because God was calling me to be still, to study the word, to shut up so that he could talk to me. How many webinars are you going to sign up for? How many dance parties are you going to participate in? This is not me judging you. This is me saying, let's go back to harmony. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. God may have placed this on someone's heart to do a webinar just for you. So if you get that in your inbox and you realize, wait, hold up, God, I wanted to do this, but they were charging 1500 now they're doing it for free, then that is for you. So if you checked in with God and he said, go, then go. This is not about me telling you what you should do or what you're not supposed to be doing. It's about me saying, get into alignment with God's perfect will for you in this season. Ladies, get into formation, right? Let's do it. So every two weeks, I send an email to Kristen and a couple of our friends, and I tell them what I'm working on. And I kept saying since the first week in January, I'm working on launching my online productivity course. My Q1 goal is to have it done by March 31st. And I was working on it, but I was making very little progress. One night during quarantine, I felt prompted by God to work on that Q1 goal. And when I tell you that he prepared a place for me, the kids were in bed, the husband was in the living room, the house was quiet. In one night, I did what I was not able to do in two and a half months. But remember, if God had not shut down that toxic relationship, I'd have been like this, hey, what's up girl, what are you doing? If God had not ended that contract that I should have ended and had me quarantined in my bedroom, this course that got launched on March 19th would not have happened. So, you know, sometimes when I speak from a place of harmony, it may sound like it's contradictory. <laughs> Fresh nails. Um, but what I want you to realize is I'm not telling you to launch or not launch. So let me clear some things up. I'm not saying that God sends us this virus to teach us a lesson. I'm also not saying that we're being punished for violating laws, but you probably should reflect on how you've been treating the temple of God, treating the environment, how we've been treating each other, and how this has all forced us to form community again and act like we have some sense, right? Apart from the people who are taking up all the toilet tissue, most of us are being pretty civilized and forming a virtual community and getting back to basic things, right? So, this is a window of opportunity. Yes, absolutely. But God has to fill in the blank. Opportunity for what? Is it your time to innovate? Is it your time to rest? Is it your time to spend more time with the family? To spend more time with God? To find your Bible? To learn to play the piano? Whatever that is, I don't know. But I do know that God has an amazing, amazing plan for you. And if you sit with him, he will tell you exactly what that is. You know, we all have a role to play. If you were on the call last week, Sybil reminded us that everyone has a role. So my thing is, if everyone is writing books, who's gonna read all these books? If all of us are the eyes, then who's gonna be the foot? We all need to find out what our role is so that we can do our role so that the body of Christ can work together. What I'm saying is that a lot of times when you listen to experts, it's not a bad thing. But I want you to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Only do what resonates with you. Listen to the experts, but take it to God. Trust God as your ultimate source. All right? So a couple of things that I want us to remember. 2020 
is still for us. I know a lot of people jokingly or half serious have said, all right, 2021, come on, because I'm done with 2020. I do know that 2020 felt like a whole decade and it's only April. I get that. But 2020 is still for us. Do not dismiss it. <laughs> 2020 is still for us and yes i'm jamaican so anybody who can't understand somebody needs to do some <laughs> transcription in the in the chat um i don't believe i don't want us to be like the unbelievers who did not get on noah's ark right when we wake we need to wake up if you believe this is a wake-up call for you then you need to get on that boat whatever boat god is calling you to be on you need to get on that boat do not be like the people during Noah's time who are like, oh, nothing is going on. Let me just chill. I'm over here laughing at these people. No, get on the boat. Whatever that boat is, get on that boat. God is not caught off guard. We need to realize that this is not a surprise for God. You know, he's not like, yo, COVID-19. I didn't know that was coming. He is not caught off guard, right? So one of the really big things I want to tell you from my own personal reflection is don't return to the old things. And I mean that in two ways. So for those of you who had that friendship or that boo, y'all broke up with the ex-boyfriend because you realized he wasn't no good for you. This is not the time to sit in boredom. So what you doing? No, put your phone down, get your Bible, get your book, do what you're supposed to do. Yes, Rachel, do not look back. Don't be turning into a pillar of salt out here in these streets, right? You are the salt of the earth, not a pillar of salt. So get off your phone. Do not contact that person. And if they contact you, then understand that it's a distraction. Unless God put it on your heart to rekindle this relationship, this friendship, do not look back. The other part about not returning to old things that I want you to realize is sometimes we want what we had, but God wants to give us what we need, right? So I wanted that house. But in retrospect, it was an okay house. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is my dream house. And even if it's not what God wanted for me in that season. So stop being so focused on what you want or what you think you need and trust God that he's going to give you exactly what you need. Some of us keep saying, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Get out of your comfort zone. Why do you want it to go back to normal? The quarantine piece I get, nobody wants to be stuck in their house. But what is it that you want to get back to? The routine where you don't have to trust God? Is it that you don't want somebody to keep sending me messages, messages to tell you to come pray at nine o'clock in the morning? You want to sleep in until 11 on a Saturday? What is it that you want to get back to? Sis, God is doing a new thing. He is disrupting old ways. Forget about the old thing. Get in alignment so that you can find out what he wants you to do. So I wrote down a few questions that I want to ask you. You can talk to me about it now if you'd like, but think about it. What are some activities that you started in quarantine that you plan to continue post-quarantine? So in essence, if this ends tomorrow, are we going to see you Saturday at 9 a.m.? That's what I mean by that. So if you started calling your mom every two days, are you still going to do that? If you started praying at five o'clock every morning, are you still going to be doing that? So the question, what are some activities that you started during this time that you want to continue post-quarantine? Thanks for um, posting that, Sybil. The second question, I believe everyone who has spoken in the bond for the last couple weeks have said this in some way or another. What do you need to do or become? So Sybil asked us, who do you need to be in the season? What do you need to do in the season? Courage, you know, we, we're all saying the same thing. What do you need to do or become to be in perfect alignment with the will of God for your life? In short, what is your role, right? What is it that you're supposed to be doing right now? So those are the two questions I want you to think about. Just have some introspection. Um, I'm going to say a few more things and then we can open up the talk and then at the end of the call, we'll pray. So when I pray, I have a perspective that I want to share with you so that everyone can understand where I'm coming from. When I pray, I pray for those who are in authority, regardless of who it is, regardless of how I feel about them. I pray for those who are in authority because they're the ones who are making these global decisions that affect our lives individually. But more importantly, the Bible said in, Gen in um, 1 Timothy 2, 2, pray that the kings who are in authority so that we can live a peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. So we need to pray for the rulers so that God can use them. 
you know, we understand that God can turn the heart of the king. So regardless of how they think, what they believe, we need to pray that God's perfect will, will be done through them. Another thing I want us to do is pray in alignment with God's will and his word. And the reason I'm saying that is a lot of times selfishness gets in the way. Oh, I'm, I'm going to pray that this quarantine ends so I can go outside and go to the mall. I'm going to pray that this quarantine ends so I can get my hair done and, and not have to worry about this unibrow that's trying to happen, right? You know, we pray about these things, but it's, it's sometimes for selfish gain. But I want to encourage us to pray God's perfect will so that we're not praying something that's against what he wants to do. A lot of us are praying for vaccines. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I don't know all the things that are happening behind this vaccine. But if that's not God's will, I'm not praying it. I'm not praying a specific prayer. You know, they said with this whole virus that it can't live in the heat. So why aren't Christians praying for a heat wave, right? I'm not saying you should pray for a heat wave, but if it can't live in the heat, then maybe that's what we need to pray for, you know? So my point in saying this is don't pray for something so specific. Pray that God's will be done. The Bible commands us as Christians to heal the sick, raise the dead. Do we still believe in the supernatural? Do we believe that people can get off ventilators and walk out of the hospital healed? Do we still believe in God's supernatural healing and cure? So I'm not going to get into whether this is political, whether it's medical, whether it's spiritual, but I want us to pray in alignment with God's will. The last thing I want to mention is the reason a lot of us are so caught up with this is because it's invisible, right? So if someone is trying to fight you, all right, courage is on the line. We know about fighting, right? <laughs> if someone is trying to fight you, you can see them. So you know exactly where to fight. If they punch you one way, you know, to duck, you know, dip, you can do all of that because you can see them. So a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I can't even see it. It's so uncertain. But if we look back at scripture, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds, right? So we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits, right? So everything that we were fighting was always invisible. This is not new. You know, we're making such a big deal about this because, oh my God, it's new. We can't see it. We don't know where it is. We were always fighting against unseen things. So I just want to encourage you to change your perspective and realize that this is not something new. The fight is the same. The battle is the Lord's. And like I said, God is not surprised. So you should know the outcome. We win. All right. So I need everybody to take themselves off mute. Let us talk. If you want to talk about the questions I posted about what habits you want to maintain, or if something resonated with you, if something God dropped in your spirit that aligns with what I said, come on. All right, Rachel, Rachel.